have, uh, you know, gone further with. I really miss the point of the financial aspect and how that's also something that can be very easily, um, uh, you know, cited. But I want you to listen to when they cut this interview short, the disclaimer that they say right after. Well, my second guest this evening is Manny Bidillo from the New York City Coalition for Accountability Now. He joins us now from New York. Many thanks for being with us here on Pulse Man Cat. Now, your organization is campaigning for a fresh investigation into the September 11th terror attacks. Tell us why. Well, basically, uh, when it comes to the only public inquiry into the events that took my uncle's life and 3,000 others. Um, what we find is the U.S. government has told us a story that conflicts tremendously with the physical, scientific, corroborated evidence that we could all find in the public forum. Sixty percent of the commissioners said that they were lied to, that we did not get the entire story. Uh, Seventy percent of family members' questions were never answered during that only public inquiry years ago. Here in New York City for the past year, we've collected 80,000 signatures to have on this November's ballot a referendum that allows for New York City voters to say yes to an impartial, non-political, subpoena-powered investigation, a proper investigation, into the events that took my uncle's life. Are you saying that you don't believe Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden were behind the attacks? I do not believe Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda were behind the attacks. The evidence doesn't point that way. Al-Qaeda is a database of uh, mercenaries that uh, the CIA kept in the 1980s and 90s. Uh, Osama bin Laden was working for the CIA as per Sybil Edmonds, a whistleblower uh, who testified uh, to the 9-11 Commission, but her testimony never got out to the public, uh, said that Osama was working for the United States government up until 11, and look how conveniently he's worked for us since. I don't even know if the man's still alive. I do know that last, uh, for the past five months, I've been reviewing, along with so many others throughout the world, that the scientific peer-reviewed and refereed study put out by Stephen Jones and Kevin Ryan and eight other scientists from here in Europe have proven that there are highly engineered military-grade explosives found in the debris of the World Trade Center. This corroborates the hundreds of first responders and firefighters that said they were heard, heard explosions and bombs going off who, in that who, building. Who, now, how did Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda get in there and do that? Who are you saying is behind the attacks? Well, well that's what... That's why this event, this mass murder, this unsolved crime begs for a new investigation. We have to find out what happened. At the very least, there's a grand cover-up. At the very most, this was criminal elements within the United States government and foreign governments and corporate entities that managed to rig those buildings and take them down. This is where the evidence points. The evidence does not point to, uh, to right, what the U.S. government is trying I, to can condition I put it, us to Can believe. I put it to you, though, that in the last eight years, there hasn't been a terror attack in the United States. Uh, many people say that the war in Iraq was the wrong thing to do, but that the war in Afghanistan, as President Obama says, is the right theatre for the so-called war on terror. Would you not say that the, the, the fact that there's been no terror attacks in the last eight years means that the, U the U.S. administration is on, at least now on the right path? You know, it could also mean that there was no real threat to begin with. Um, we're in Afghanistan right now, and uh, we're bombing innocent Muslim families. We're de demonizing them throughout our media. Uh, what we find is um, in Afghanistan, not only is there an oil pipeline that's supposed to be built through there, but we find a tr tremendous wealth of natural resources, including opium fields, okay? Last year had the largest opium crop in the history of Afghanistan. Um, and. This is when NATO is there. I mean, what's going on? We know the CIA has been bringing drugs into this country, the United States, for the past five decades. So now we have NATO and U.S. forces in control, supposedly, of Afghanistan, but yet the poppy field crop Bidillo, is, is the largest it's ever been. Mr. Bidillo, what's going on? Mr. Bidillo, many thanks indeed for joining us. I'm afraid we will have to leave it there. Well, that's it for tonight's focus. We'd like to remind you that any views uh, given by our correspondents or our guests are not, of course, the views of Hans van Kant, War on Terror. We would you not say that the, the fact that there's been no terror attacks in the last eight years means that the, U the U.S. administration is on, at least now on the right path? <laughs> Any views uh, given by our guests are not, of course, the views of Hans van Kant.